What is up, everybody? Welcome, 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 welcome to episode one of the Game Breaker Nation Community Cast. Uh, I'm Gary Gannon, joined by Mr. Mike Burns. So what the F is this? What are we doing? What is the GBN cast? Well, we don't really know. We're just doing it. So, no, basically, uh, we get a ton, ton, ton of questions uh, from the community about, hey, what's going on at Game Breaker? What are you guys doing? What's the status of the Game Breaker Nation? Uh, what are all these new websites and forms popping up? Like, all kinds of stuff. So... Instead of trying to jam all of the, uh, you know, behind the scenes stuff that's been going on at Game Breaker into like some of the shows and stuff like that, which we really don't have time for, I figure we definitely need to like just start like kind of a loose podcast show thing about we can just kind of like riff for a couple minutes, kind of fill you guys in, take a couple questions, that sort of thing. So um, I guess first and foremost, uh, obviously, I think the thing that everybody's been asking about is, uh, you know, all these new sites popping up and XIVNation.com and all that good stuff. So. I guess the first thing was like why the new direction of you know changing uh creating new sites and things like that um i think the biggest thing was that i mean for the past like year or two um if you guys have been around for a while and you've seen the game breaker website it changed a bunch of different times and as we were trying to do for for quite a while was we were trying to really nail down a site that would not only um be useful for players who like to jump around from MMO to MMO, but also a place that would be useful for people who like one specific MMO and maybe make it their, their home. Um, we never really, I don't feel like we ever really achieved it. We tried, we made these game pages, we made specific areas where it was just like just World of Warcraft, Skilled Wars. Looking at the analytics in the background, you guys didn't really go there that much. Um, so I know, I know there's people out there going like, but I love that. Um, I'm just looking at telling you the <laughs> truth. Like the truth is a lot of those pages that just didn't get used. So we just didn't have that. Um, so one thing I want everybody to sort of understand is like, you know, everything that we're doing is really with, with the community in mind. And we're not trying to at all break up the Game Breaker family and the community that exists. Um, quite the opposite. What we want to do is we want to extend that family. We want to grow that, yep. you know, the family. Um, and since, uh, you know, we did the cube, we did cube nation, uh, which is, is, you know, didn't, didn't fully take off too, too much, but it's, it's still going there and it's growing. And we did free to play TV, which is doing really good, but it's also, it's a different kind of thing since it's more about looking for games. Um, XIV nation is definitely the first one that I think we launched for final fantasy. That's like taken off and, and the community seems to love it. Um, and looking at what we're looking at on the back end is it's not, it's not like, you know, it's not segregating community. It's, it's. It's I I did this in a blog post to try and explain to people the the, the thing is when you're, when you're trying to create one single website it's really hard to give a lot of good functionality and tools and an environment that like a specific player wants to to hang out at so you know it's just kind of the nature of the beast is that if I'm really invested in Final Fantasy I really want to hang out with a bunch of other hardcore Final Fantasy 14 right. players I want my own forums I want tools I want specific things as a player that we can only offer uh with its own site and uh so that's what we're doing um it doesn't look like it's breaking up anything with game breaker except bringing in a bunch of new people that are really super awesome and cool so yeah that, that's that's going really well so yes you will start seeing new sites um for a lot of games the next ones on the list are um i can actually pull up the list to tell you the next few i don't know in what order this will happen um I actually just sent this email today. There's, there's only 170 domains in in the old banks there. There's a lot of games. <laughs> we're looking we're looking a little more forward than backward right now. Um, you may see some games that existing have their own uh, get their own sites, um, but I think right now it's it's more important for us to move a little bit forward with most sites, only because I think a lot of you. Uh, playing games that have kind of already solidified you have a home you have a community or you know right I, we are yeah, we do, talked uh, about this in, uh, behind the scenes right do, should we do one for something like rift or should we do everquest next first you know what right. should we do and it was kind of like well the rift guys and girls they probably already have their well hard established homes that are there yeah. for the last two and three years let's try and provide homes for some of the people looking at some things coming up yeah, I mean the big one is World of Warcraft for us. I mean it's yeah. definitely no 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 doubt about it. It's our largest traffic drawer. So like you know do, do we do the the WoW Nation? Um, probably yes, eventually sometime, but definitely not on the top. So the next few that you'll probably see uh, that are on the list are um, Hearthstone. So there's gonna be Hearth uh, Hearth Nation, uh, EQ Next, uh, Wildstar, uh, and I thought there was one more. That may be the next three. After that, um, you know, there's a there's a bunch, and we can't we can't do them all at once, so they take time to kind of put up. But those are the next few that we're going to be 
launching. Um, and and, and me uh, and chat actually kind of hit right on the whole idea behind this. Uh, and you had mentioned it's to, to foster a community around specific games. And Meep brings up the point, I, I think people would like to go to separate specific sites. They'd love videos about bosses and strategies and things like that. And that's what kind of morphing into this more community-centric, individualized sites all under the Game Breaker umbrella allows us to do. Uh, it's not just, let's get the news out there. Yes, we're still going to cover the news. That's important to what we do. But when we start isolating things, we can throw strategy guides onto the Final Fantasy XIVNation.com site. Uh, and it doesn't bug 900 bajillion other visitors who did not come for that content and don't want to watch a boss strategy video on Game Breaker's main wall while they're looking for their WoW content. That's exactly what these types of moves allow us to do. Yeah, and so everybody understands, like, you know, what's going to happen to Game Breaker. So Game Breaker is going to sort of be, you're going to still be able to see all the shows there. So all the shows will still go through Game Breaker. Um, a lot of all the big news will go through Game Breaker. So you'll still be able to, like, follow it pretty much. I don't necessarily, besides we are going to be changing the layout of Game Breaker to the same layout you see on Free-to-Play and XIV. Um, besides that changing, I don't know if you're necessarily going to notice that much difference, to be quite honest with you. Um, we, we are going to do one thing that I know people are going to be like, but I like those stories. We are going to do one thing that is a little bit different. Um, you will not see, so I shouldn't say everything. It's kind of hard. How, how do I phrase it? <laughs> so if you notice in the past year, we, we tried to cover like not only MMO stuff, but we did some esports stuff and we were doing some PC stuff and we were doing some culture -y stuff. Um, you guys seem to really love the culture stuff. Like you definitely like, like the, the weird offbeat stories about like giant robots and cosplay and things like that. That's not going to stop. Um, we probably are going to stop all esports um, on the site, and we're probably going to stop mostly all the PC stuff as well. Um, we're going to have sort of like a geek culture section of the site to kind of like throw stuff in there. And I think when there's really big stories that we will, we think that you guys would be, you know, like Half Life Three confirmed, like even though it's a PC game, like it'll probably go in there because I know that a lot of people want to hear that story. So it's not like we're going to really stop that kind of coverage. Um, but again, esports, all that kind of stuff not really like our thing it's going to be very much more mmo centric like we're just the game breaker is going to be very much more mmo centric again you'll see all the shows i don't think you're going to notice that big of much of a change if i didn't even tell you about it and point it out you probably wouldn't even notice the most of it right away considering <laughs> looking at some of the numbers um but yeah like what like what you're saying mike is that having the individual sites what it really can do what we've learned over the past like week or two with xiv nation is that the the community uh we've been interacting with them like just just hour by hour um and asking them what they want as yep. a Final Fantasy XIV player. And it's very specific sort of things, you know, it's not, and, and they, they wouldn't work across the board for every single game. So what we want to do is we really want to tailor these sites then down to, and it's just slight details, like on the surface, they're all going to kind of feel and look the same, but it's going to be in the details, I think, that listening to the community, which is what it's all about, is that, you know, everything we do is for the community um, to really kind of give gamer the gamers who are playing those specific games exactly what they need and what they want to make their life better that's really what it comes yep. down to so that's what we're going to be doing um and, and varus and chat you're ex you're absolutely right this does make it harder on the back end 100 percent. it makes it harder on us and we're largely volunteer based we are always looking for people always that want to help make content you don't want to write about 900 games but final fantasy 14 is really your thing come volunteer write for XIV Nation. You'll only be writing about Final Fantasy. So, uh, yes, we could always use help. <laughs> yeah, so it is going to be a bit of a challenge, especially because these individual sites want almost more granular information than we're even used to reporting on, right? Like it used to be where... And I, I can't say that that's going to get ramped up on all the sites, like overnight to the point that we're like right. able to cover every little detail. Um, we're going to do our best, and we're going to still deliver shows, and it's going to be... You know, because like what we find, you know, we're just looking at the numbers. We find like, you know, like a, I know there's a lot of people watching this cast. I imagine probably like watch almost everything we do, right? Like they yeah. just watch everything. Um, the truth of the matter is there's most of the shows, most of the shows, they watch that one show. Most of the Guild Wars people watch Guild Cast and that's it. So they're not even, I got to get them to watch this Guild GBN cast so they know what's going on. So it's hard to communicate. Anyway. All right. So that's why you're seeing all those uh, different sites crop up and things like that. There will be more. 
Um, I'm very much aware of quality of life issues that we're going to have. And I know that the number one thing right now is single sign on for all of these sites. I can tell you, I'm totally aware of it. We're working on it. We're looking into it. It's not a simple, like, you know, turnkey thing that happens overnight, but believe me. Yes. I know the more sites we make and the more things we make you sign into is a pain in the freaking ass and I don't want to do it. So someday soon. TBD, hopefully, um, we're on it now, looking into it. Uh, we'll, we'll implement single sign-on so you'll be able to log in hopefully once um, and just be in everything. That's that's the goal, all the forms, all the comments, the, the site, the whole thing. So, again, I'll let you know more and more community cast. That's what this whole thing is for, kind of update you guys as stuff like that progresses. Um, right now, I can tell you what we've done is we've, re we've written up the spec doc of – the type of person we basically need to hire for this job. Um, and basically we're going to be we're, Richard Booth and I are overlooking that to look at that, make sure it's all ready. And then we're going to kind of put that up and, and, you know, have to hire somebody to kind of come in. Cause this is a very specific job. It's not, there's a lot of moving parts. It's not as simple as it sort of seems, you know, the forms are one platform, the site's a platform. There's a lot of moving parts that we got, to got to take into consideration. So we need to get a professional to kind of come in and, and spec all that out for us. So, we are on it. The spec doc is sitting in my Google Docs right now. Um, so there's that. There's all those changes. Um, we launched a bunch of stuff. I guess, yeah, I mean, the one thing I think that a lot of people, we haven't pushed too, too much um, would be the, uh, the Smite forms, uh, which live at, uh, I want to bring them up here. Uh, why are you not working? Hang on. It's all bustified. Yeah, so we also, I didn't, I didn't I haven't talked too much about this again because it's a little bit outside of our wheelhouse, but we did launch uh, a set of forms for Smite. Uh, you can find them at smite uh, .forum .smite nation, smite nation TV. So uh, there's no full-on site for Smite yet. Uh, it, could, it could potentially come depending on uh, how the sort of the community reacts to this. Um, yep. Why did we do it so quick? Uh, basically, because if you guys don't pay attention to this, might basically high res uh, took their forms offline, so the players had no forms. They uh, they're gonna sort of utilize Reddit and social media for most of that stuff. And I kind of just thought, like, wow, I really think there's probably still a lot of gamers out there who want forms. So let's put some forms up and see if you guys want them. So form.smitenation.tv. If you guys are smite players, go check that out. And if uh, the forms start hustling, bustling, maybe we'll launch the entire smitenation.tv site. Um, Firm, what else you got going on? You're you're XIV Nation in it up and free to play in it yeah. up. We don't really have any XIV notes for the show. We're just we sort of like, this. hey, let's just. <laughs> it was Tweemo's over. Let's do another one. Let's keep Mike from playing Final Fantasy XIV just a little bit longer. <laughs> uh, free to play TV, obviously XIV Nation still writing on Game Breaker, uh, the main site itself. So yeah, lots and lots of word pressing typing. I guess uh, I guess the other thing, really quick to, to and I'll probably wrap it up, is um, the Game Breaker Nation stuff. What's going on with the Game Breaker Nation? Um, we're working towards it, uh, which means what does that mean? It means nothing, right? Basically, what that means is I think I've <laughs> talked about this on shows, but so right now, uh, if you guys check out the sites, you obviously can see that GameBreaker.tv is on a different layout and setup than all the other sites. So the first thing that needs to happen is we need to get Game Breaker to this new, uh, like, you know, site layout. Um, not the simplest of tasks. Um, we're very close to doing the migration. I don't have a date yet. Hopefully by the next cast, I think if we do this on Fridays, maybe hopefully by the next cast, I think I'll have like a rough date of maybe when we're actually going to do it. I don't know. I've got a, we've got, we've been basically, we've had to take the whole development site and basically get it up to speed, looking exactly how we want to, and then figure out since the way the posts are all like, you know, the, to migrate them all is just, it's a pretty big process. I and mean, we have a lot of content that lives inside of Game Breaker from day one, and we can't lose any of that. So it's not an easy process. Um, we're very close though to migration. So migration is step one, get gamebreaker.tv up and running on the new format. Um, we've started weekly uh, meetings with the Game Breaker Nation uh, officers and event coordinators. That's gonna keep going, uh, ongoing. Um, and then as soon as the migration is done, I think we'll be really close to kind of like announce the Game Breaker Nation. Uh, will it be ready for Final Fantasy XIV launch is the question I keep getting. I don't know. I hope. That's kind of my goal. My, I don't want to, I can't guarantee it. My kind of my goal is that date because it'd really be nice with the launch. Um, 
but I think we're going to do some really interesting things. I kind of had some, I think it's going to be, it, it's, we're going to, we're, we're going to kind of structure some things in some ways. It's going to be interesting. Um, in the past week, we've kind of talked about a couple of things that I think most people seem to be positive about. Um, and some of you may be surprised about some of you may not be happy about if you don't get in right away. So here's what we're going to do. I'll let you know. I'm pretty sure we're going to do this. Um, so we thought about just like, Hey, are we just going to put something up on the site and say, Hey, here's a way to fill out this thing and, and become part of the game breaker nation, which is a cross gaming guild. Um, but much more than that, there's gonna be a lot of stuff. I'll lay out all the stuff we're doing at a later date. Um, and we have the potential to possibly like, you know, I'm watching chat saying like, are we worried about like overloading game breaker people as far as like with all these new sites? Yes. And could you imagine if thousands of you signed up for the game breaker nation, like day one, like we wouldn't know what to do. So basically what we're going to do, um, we're going to, we're going to do something a little bit different. So it's not going to be like an open forum where you can just go sign up. Uh, what's going to happen is we're going to have a specific day or days to be determined uh, at a specific time. We're basically going to, we're going to literally do like an orientation kind of thing. And we're going to sort of say like, Hey, sign up for a seat. Seats probably going to be limited to maybe I'm thinking around maybe the number of around 50. Um, so let's just say hypothetically, Hey, orientation is like Wednesday, five o'clock. See, here's a form you could fill out to be on the list to show up. <laughs> After it sounds that, like you're trying to sell your timeshare, Gary. <laughs> it kind of is like that, but it's really, but it's actually really important because it's really, it's really hard to encompass what the Game Breaker Nation is like, like how yeah. I see it and what the vision of this thing is is pretty big, and I don't feel like just putting some information up on the site is like enough. And I kind of want like a cross, like I want some communication with the audience as well as like, you know, to talk to the fans. So basically what's going to happen is you're going to sign up. Let's say seats are limited to 50. You sign up. 50 people get to show up. We're going to have like a meeting. You, you, you 50 people will show up that week. Um, I'll be the one there going over what the Game Breaker Nation is, why I'm doing it, why I think it's so cool and how I kind of want it run. This is like really important for me because I really feel like if we screw this up, like this is, this kind of is almost like the all encompassing thing that I think like makes Game Breaker going to be what it is. Like this is probably one of the most important initiatives I've ever done on Game Breaker because it's beyond just making yeah. shows. Um, and I don't want this to backfire and i think part of that is to talk to everybody almost like a, sort of on a semi one-to-one -one basis and lay out yep. what it is hey here's what it is this is what we're going to do and you know do like a q a session and kind of hear some feedback and then for you guys who want to join up uh then that will kind of be like hey here's how you join up to the game breaker nation at that point after that level and we're thinking of doing the same thing with all the the um the officers and all the event coordinators as well. Cause I think communication is really important with what we're doing here. Cause it's pretty massive and I don't want this thing to just be like some, it's, it's not, it's more than just a guild. Like it really is. And yep. I think once we sort of unveil it and people start seeing like the vision behind it, it's, it's going to be an awesome thing if we get it right. So I just want to make sure that everything goes right. So that's kind of how the game breaker nation I think is going to roll out. Um, so it may be slow at first and I'm, I'm sure the first week that the seats are going to fill up and be gone in two seconds. Um, so some of you, like I said, might be angry because you can't get in. But the other thing it does on the flip side is if we only have to deal with 50, we know there's going to be hurdles. We've never done this before, right? This is right. new territory. Um, and we know there's going to be kinks. And if we have 50 people to deal with, it's a lot easier for us on the back end to kind of figure all these things out and still kind of control what's happening than if like, you know, 5,000 of you show up and, and like something like crazy like that happens and everybody's completely pulling their hair out and going nuts. So I'd rather us test this, so to speak, with 50. Will we open it up at a later date, completely open and just kind of do it? Maybe, I don't know. Again, we'll see. Will days increase? Like, will it just be one day a week? We could increase to two days a week. We can increase it to three days a week. So. I don't know. Like I said, I'll be completely honest with you. Work in progress, but I want to make sure that it's awesome for you guys and rather not suck and just get, you know, all of you in. So don't be angry if you don't get in the first week or the first meeting. So I apologize, but just realize I'm trying to do it so we don't screw up the entire initiative. Um, I don't know. I think that's all I got for this cast. And we got a couple of questions, I think, from people. Um, we'll answer some questions as well. Let's see. Um, Let's see, a community question from BM Jaeger says, considering that, oh, this is something I should announce. Uh, this is actually, I should announce this. Um, so last night, uh, I announced, kind of soft announced, uh, if you guys are World of Warcraft fans, you might know Convert to Raid. Uh, Pat Crane and Coltrane, ConvertToRaid.com. Awesome, awesome show. Uh, they are now a part of the Game Breaker team. Uh, so the Convert to Raid show. Uh, ConvertToRaid.com is not going anywhere. Their website's not going anywhere. 
basically their show is going to be posted on Game Breaker as well as Convert to Raid, so they're just becoming part of the family. Uh, so awesome. So happy to have those guys on because they do just an, a kick-ass job uh, on their show there. And the other cool thing is um, their show, if you guys are fans of the show, you know that uh, they do like a sort of a semi-live Twitch thing, but then like it's an audio-only show. Uh, it's going to be going all to video as well. So we're going to be working with them to nice. get them up and running and make the entire Convert to Raid show all video as well as audio. So uh, the question basically is, considering that CTR Convert to Raid is joining Game Breaker, will there be a separate GBN guild in WoW from CTR or with the CTR guilds become a Game Breaker Nation guild for WoW? Um, so CTR runs their own uh, community event, like uh, you know, for World of Warcraft. You know, I haven't. I'll be honest. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't talked to Pat about this. I would imagine my my answer right now would be that they're going to say separate. Um, we would have to have a very long, big discussion about that and see how that works. So right now, there hasn't been that discussion. It's basically been about the show. So I would say it's kind of safe to say right now uh, that CTR Guild and the GBN Guild will stay separate. So I imagine some of you will be in both, but hey. Um, let's see, Justin Kennedy, uh, let's see, Nax HID says, why do I have to pay for GBN since when, uh, you guys don't ask for money for anything? Didn't know just hearing that GBN is paid only, uh, left a bad taste in my mouth. Uh, good question again, which is sort of why I want to have the, uh, the sort of like meetings with all of you guys in the orientation is to go over some of that stuff and sort of explain it. I'll tell you the big reason, um, is because the vision of what the Game Breaker Nation is is so much bigger than just a, a, a guild and just having like a forum and a, a, a ventrilo that um, a lot of the people who are volunteering a ton of their time on the back end to make this happen um, really need to be hired and paid. <laughs> like uh, people need to be, they because they, it's, it's, it's a big initiative. It's not just some volunteers kind of like, you know, to run a guild. It's, it's, it's much more than that. And, I kind of think to do all the things we want to do and grow it and become this, this thing, there is no way we can do it without money. Like that, that's the bottom right. line. Like we looked at it and I'm still trying to decipher how that's all going to work. Um, all I can tell you is that the shows on game break and all that stuff will always stay free. You'll always be able to access all of them, all that kind of stuff. Um, an initiative like this with how many things it, it kind of builds into it, it's it's going to be impossible to just try and do this with 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 no sort of you know dues or fees. So yes, there will be a payment attached to it. Again, this is why I want to do the orientation because when I lay everything out and show you guys like, hey, this is like the bigger picture kind of thing. This is why it has to happen, and then uh, we're going to leave it up to you to say, hey, is this something you want to be a part of or not? Um, I know, and, and that's also the other big thing to take home though is that what you get now is not changing. Nothing. No. You know, you will you will always get that. This is in addition to everything that we pump out on Game Breaker. Now it's we're not all of a sudden you know Netflix, <laughs> Game Breaker Netflix, where you have to subscribe to see anything. No, we're not taking anything away. We're adding to what we already have. You know, we want to do things like um, just for instance, like and I can't I can't put like expectations on it, but it's like we want to do like GBN members giveaways. You know, now that that all depends on you know, how many members we have and, and, and stuff like that. But, you know, it might not be like a mouse. It could be like a $5,000 computer. I don't know. Like, it's like, we're not really sure we're gonna have to grow this thing again. But I think there's a lot of things we can build into the Game Breaker Nation um, that could be really cool. And I think the biggest thing is, is the experience of what the Game Breaker Nation is, because it's not, it's not just like this, leave it. It's not this turnkey thing where we're just gonna like turn it on and expect uh, people to pay like, you know, fee for it or dues. And like, we just kind of like sit back and just like, don't do anything. And just kind of like, that's not <laughs> at all what this thing is. So it's not like this is like, well, a lot of other sites. So a lot of other sites out there, when we started looking at this, what a lot of other sites do is they have these premium options, right? You can go to it and says, Hey, turn off all the banner ads, uh, maybe get into some beta key stuff and like, you know, maybe get this one other perk. And then it's this much money. And, and that's very much a turn on, turn off like service for them, right? Like you, you pay them the, the you know, whatever it is per month the banner ads go away and then like, they don't have to do anything, um, which those things are going to be included in this. It's going to be the banner ads go away for all the, you know, the websites and all kinds of stuff like that. Like I said, the idea of the game breaker nation though is so much larger and it's just, it, it's, it's going to cost money. So it's, it's going to kind of like, you know, the other thing too, that part of partially is like, it, we're going to get such an awesome community. I know this kind of sounds like weird coming from an angle of money, but the people who are going to like, 
come into this thing are going to be so super cool and passionate about it. Um, cause it, I, I just, I know it's going to be a really, really cool, like it's going to be a cool club. It's really going to be awesome. Um, and the event coordinator thing is something that I don't think I've ever seen anyone else do on the level we want to do it. I'm talking like events every night of the week for different games constantly, like in just things to do. So, um, so there to your question, left a bit of bad taste in your mouth, sign up, come to the orientation when we're ready and we'll talk through it and you see if it's for you. And if it's not, it's not, um, uh, any plans or thoughts from Hicks 64 says any plans or thoughts on unifying the various game breaker site forums. So I assume you're talking about the separate new sites and the current sites. Uh, no, so no, not going to unify them. Game breaker forms. will stay the game breaker forms just like the way they are now. Of course we could always do changes, add sections, remove sections. Um, that's fine. Um, all the other specific sites will stay their own forms. We will not be integrating those. We will be working on, like I said, single sign-on. Single sign-on, right. Which I think was more to, to his question, his or her question was, can I sign in and be integrated into everything? We will be working on that. So that that's yeah. what we will be working on. So, But unifying as far as like, you know, merging them all into one big thing, no, they're definitely going to stay separate. So reasons that are just incredibly boring. So, <laughs> Colin wants to know how much... We've had those discussions. We don't know yet. <laughs> oh, for the game, game breaker, breaker nation, yeah. Nation. Still, still working on it. Believe me. But all I can tell you is I fight like I constantly. I'm looking at it, just going like, if 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 I expect any of you to spend one dollar on this, you have to. I have to feel that you're getting like ten dollars worth of like. It's like I do not want there not to be so much value packed in this thing. Which is why I keep going back and say it's a it's an experience and it's a community thing that why the experience of what the Game Breaker Nation is, if it doesn't completely kick ass and rock, then it's not worth it. So I might as well not do it, which is why we're taking it kind of slow, thinking about gating it. Like, I, I want to get it right because I, I know if we do it, it's going to be freaking awesome. I'm just tired. The reason I'm doing it really quick is that I'm tired of like people, especially gamers who play different games. You create these great friendships and these great bonds with people and then switch games and you lose them all completely forever. And I feel like if there was, if, if, if somebody could kind of take control of it and keep a lot of players and it's like, you know, you want to go try X game. You don't want to lose all your friends. Well, you know that there's other people in the game breaker nation right there that you can go play with who are going to be cool, positive, um, you know, maybe teach you the game. I mean, we're talking about all kinds of stuff. We're talking about like, you know, our League of Legends officer is talking about like, hey, we should have one night a week where it's it's taking noobs completely who are new to, to League of Legends and having them come in and we literally just start teaching them how to play League of Legends. Like in a kind of an environment that you're not going to get screamed at and yelled at and stuff, you know, but your World of Warcraft friends are still over there. So it's, it's, it's a lot of events like that, like RP events, fun events, dance party events, dungeon run events, you know, noob whoa, events. Whoa, dance, I didn't know I was going to have to dance. Anything, Whoa. I'm telling you, like you're the, all kinds of stuff like that. But again, it's it's like trying to bring the community together and, and <laughs> rift weddings. Hey, <laughs> Era brings up a good point. Arathur says, uh, "Well, if it fails, we could bring in Yoshi P and have him build GB Nation 2.0." <laughs> uh, people, all right. I'm, I'm, I'll answer one more question. People are asking about voice chat, so. Yeah. right now we are looking at mumble again this is like a big decision we have to make and we have to look at all the technical stuff on the back end of like how we can like control it so right now mumble is at the top of our list i can tell you that so i think uh it makes it easy um i think that's it is there anything else in the chat room uh eu barbecue events EU? at gary's house i don't want to get into it like but seriously like if if this thing works the way i want it to work a year or two from now, we could be going to the Game Breaker Nation conference. That's all I'm saying. So if it's possible, it's possible. Hey, I've seen Penny Arcade do it. Why can't we do it? That's all I got. All right. Community cast. It's kind of a loose thing. Maybe we'll have notes next time. So we actually have stuff to cover. <laughs> no, you don't need notes. I guess we'll do, you want to just do this after Twemos? You want to just like say yeah, this is the fine. time of day? All right, so Fridays after Twemo, we'll jump in and Q will probably join us and we'll we'll talk about maybe, you know, and we can bring Missy and Justin on and they could talk more about the Game Breaker Nation stuff as well and just kind of keep you guys in the loop uh, as much as possible because there's a lot of stuff going on and I know you guys have a lot of questions. So, cool. All right, well, for Mike Byrne and uh, Game Breaker TV, 
signing off. See you guys. Uh, go have fun at some Final Fantasy XIV, Mr. Byrne. Back to love. I will. Thank All you, right. sir. Thanks for watching, guys.